<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Biology 101. This is Braden Townsend. I'm sorry about the camera angling. You can't see my Let me fix that really quickly. There. Is this better? Yes. Good. Now. Today we are going to be learning about, today we will be learning about, let me just get my notes working, sulfahedral groups and methyl groups, sulfahedral. Sulfahedral groups is a functional group. The sulfahedral group is a functional group which in which groups of molecules functional group which are groups of atoms within a molecule that are responsible for the characteristic reactions of said molecule. The sulfahedral group consists of a sulfur, sulfur atom and a um what was it? Oh yes, sulfahedral group consists of a sulfur atom and a hydrogen atom ionically bonded and is bonded to many to other molecules through a single bond. The compound name of the sulfahedral group is thoyl. An example of a molecule that is a sulfahedral group is cytosine, which is comprised of Let me find it. I had it pulled up. If I can draw it for you lovely, lovely people. I guess I don't have it pulled up anymore. One second, please. Okay, we're back. Okay, I found the example. A sulfahedral group, an example of one, would be cytosine, which is Hydrogen and oxygen connecting to a carbon group, which bonds to an another bonds to another oxygen hydrogen, which connects to a, another carbon carbon hydrogen. Carbon at the middle connects to a nitrogen group, which connects to two which connects to two hydrogen groups. And the carbon carbon here connects to a hydrogen group, which can and it also connects to a oxygen hydrogen. Sulfahedral groups. Very, very, very important. These are the groups that make certain thing things such as. Now, the sulfahedral group consists of a sulfur atom and a hydrogen atom ionically bonded and is bonded to other molecules through a single bond. The compound name of a sulfahedral group is thoyl. An example of the molecule that is a sulfahedral group is cytosine, which is comprised of three carbon atoms, two oxygen atoms, three carbon atoms, two oxygen atoms, and six hydrogen atoms. Or sorry, not two oxygen atoms, three oxygen atoms, one nitrogen, and one sulfur, which is around here somewhere. The sulfahedral group influences whatever molecule it is bonded it's bonded to by enabling the molecule to become more reactive, especially with oxygen as the molecule is easily oxidized. Now I have a question for you to answer. 
What's the compound name of a sulfahedral group? The answer is Thoi. If you did not, if you guessed that wrong, please rewind the video, watch it again, and pay more attention. It's very important. Now for our second group, we have the methyl group. Methyl group. The methyl group is a functional group comprised of a carbon atom ionically bonded to three hydrogen atoms. And this functional group is bonded to other molecules through a single bond. Let me find my picture of it so I can draw it. I will be back within, I guess, I'll be back in a bit, but for you people, for you lovely, lovely people, it's only going to be a couple. It's only going to, it's not even going to be a second, because I'm pausing it. One. Oh, I'm back? Oh, I guess I'm back. Um, hello again. I know I just paused this and it wasn't really long for you people, but for me it was a few minutes. Now, where were we? Oh yes, it was, a methyl group is a functional group comprised of a carbon atom ionically bonded to three hydrogen atoms. And this functional group is bonded to other molecules through a single bond. Compound name of methyl groups of methyl groups is a methylated compound. Methylated compound. Now, a methylated compound can't, an example of a methylated compound is 5-methylcytosine, which is comprised of five carbon atoms, seven hydrogen atoms, which I'm not thinking that's right. My script is wrong. This is a, this is 5-methylcytosine. It's H3C, connected to a pentagon there give me a second my mental cytosine is H is hydrogen 3 carbon, or H3C, connected to a pentagon that has an ionic bond right here. Now, and the, which is the, not a pentagon, I'm sorry, it's a hexagon. I'm sorry, I'm, it's late, I'm kind of out of it, but let me continue. It's connected to a pentagon which has a nitrogen right here, has a nitrogen and hydrogen, which and here it ionically bonds to an oxygen. Here it goes a nitrogen with an ionic bond. And finally, an NH2 up here. Now, if we count it up, that's three, four, five, six hydrogens, one carbon, two nitrogens, an oxygen, one oxygen all together in this one big mush. The methyl group, and this doesn't look like much to you, but this is very important. The methyl group within a molecule influences that molecule by making the molecule nonpolar and thus hydrophobic, so that it doesn't readily bond and react with mo water molecules. Now I have one last question for you. Actually, first, I'm going to give you an example of what a methyl group is used for. I will be right back. And also, I will also give you an example of what a sulfur control group is used for. Hello, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I'm having to go to my notes a lot because a lot of my stuff is not right. Um, now, an example of a methyl, of something that methylated, that a methylated compound, or 5-methylcytosine, would be used for. 5-methylcytosine is used for in DNA as a way to 
silence foreign DNA types. Like, say, your DNA, a bacteria was trying to bond with, a virus was trying to inject its DNA into a cell. 5-methylcytosine could be used to silence a foreign DNA. But usually that will not happen because the viruses must have something that can stop that. Um, sulfhydryl, sulfhydryl, thionol is found in things such as onions and skunk spray. That vapor that comes off when you freshly cut an onion, that is thionol. The smell, the skunk spray odor, that's thionol. So, it's a sulfur compound, sulfur compound, which will, which makes it smell extremely bad. Now, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I do not know much about this subject, but when I, but when I do my research, I will do it well. And if you can give, and if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. I might not be able to, but I will try to. And last thing is, go easy on your bodies. Don't be doing smoke. Don't smoke. Don't do drugs. Don't chew tobacco. Don't do anything that you would that you might regret later in life. Because trust me, you will regret it later in life. Now, you lovely, lovely people, I have one last question for you. I listed a methyl group. I listed an example of a molecule with a methyl group in it. Can you remember what it is called? Take your time. I can wait. I can wait. Yep. I can wait. Hurry! Did you get the answer? Good. If you answered something such as thionol, you were wrong. However, if you answer something such as, however, if you answer something such as glucose, you are also wrong. But in retrospect, you probably thought you were right. And I'm sorry if I'm being mean about this, but it's late. I'm tired, and I'm probably sure that you all can kind of understand how I'm feeling. I'm recording this at 8:12 right now, but um. Oh, was it again? oh yes, the answer to the question is 5-methylcytosine. Now, I'm going to be honest with all of you. This was this is very fun doing. I'm going to be editing this very, very early during class. So, I thank you all for watching this and for just being very, very attentive. And this is a thank you from me, Anna, and I can't ever remember her name. Danielle. This is a thank you from me, Anna, and Danielle for watching our video. And I will see all you in next assignment. So please, don't change. Don't change anything. Bye. Bye-bye. Where is it? I want to go to the stop button.